Okay, so I got the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, Note 8, versus the Apple iPhone XS Max here. Um, so what we're dealing with today is the software. We have Android 9 Pi here versus iOS 12. A little bit background story here. This is spring of 2019. Just got the Android 9 Android Pi software for the Note 8. And let me say, it's pretty incredible. It's really overhauled the phone. Um, obviously, the first year and a half of this phone's release. Well, let's see. Is that right? You know, I don't know, it might have had Nougat, I don't remember, but it was on Oreo for a long time. What are you looking for? Amazon thinks I'm talking to her. Uh, anyway, um, this phone, the software now, is just really hot, okay? They improved the fingerprint reader on the back. They improved the face unlock dramatically. It's just a much better software experience. So, in summary, to kind of compare, you know, what we're dealing with here software-wise... Really what it comes down to when you're talking Android 9 versus iOS 12. What it comes down to is you got more customizations here versus perhaps a more polished experience here. This phone allows you to customize things more, like you can customize how your icons look. You can put widgets on your home screens. You can resize those widgets. Over here, there's no widgets per se on your home screen. Apple has done this thing here on the side where you can place widgets. And let me tell you, that's a sweet addition there. Ever since Apple did that with iOS, I've loved that. I love having that ability. It'd be probably a little bit nicer if you could put the widgets out here, but, you know, they kind of keep it a little more closed. App experience is better on iOS. That's where iOS really shines. The apps are of a higher quality, a higher polish. They just feel richer. They feel better on iOS. Sometimes Android apps allow you to do a little bit more they allow you a little more freedom than over here. But, you know, it seems more often than not, they're just not quite as polished. They just feel a little more amateur or a little more just less quality. I think developers a lot of times place the emphasis on iOS since, you know, when I've gone to the phone store, I often ask them, you know, how many iPhones do you sell versus Android? And usually the rep will tell me we sell about four iPhones for every Android phone. Sometimes maybe it's five iPhones for every Android. So you can kind of get the picture. I mean, it seems like the developers like to focus here more. As far as 
speed now obviously that's going to depend on your processor speed between both of these phones it's pretty comparable the iphone is faster obviously but it's marginal except on exporting like video files or something of a large intense nature the iphone's definitely going to be quicker on ios in this comparison the beautiful thing about Samsung, though, is they provide so many extra custom software features that Apple just doesn't have on their phones. Like on the Note 8 here, you've got the sidebar, right? So I could control my brightness, turn on the blue light filter, make the screen negative, make it black and white, all right here on the side. I can take a screenshot by whipping this out on the side instead of doing your hand tricks to do it like you have to do on the iPhone. Okay, much better over here. I can do a smart screen selection. <laughs> Can't do that on the iPhone. I can launch two apps at once and have these custom presets as to which apps I want to la launch at the same time. A Apple doesn't even let you do two apps at once. Okay, so see, we're starting to see the customization and freedom thing coming into play here. Now, with Android 9 on the Note 8, <laughs> They've allowed you to have the swipe gestures enabled, and I love swipe gestures. For me, on my OnePlus 6 was the first phone I had them on. Love it. You know, I still have that phone. Love it on the iPhone. Now have it on the Note 8. It, it, it just kind of made this phone up to date and complete almost, <laughs> having those swipe gestures but, you know, Samsung, again, software-wise, if we go into the settings, see, they let you customize how this panel up here looks with the background color and the highlight color, okay? Settings, they let you have dark mode. I'm assuming that'll come to iOS eventually. Um, you know, like with the display, for example, you have the ability to adjust the display in all these different ways here on how you want it to look. You can change your screen resolution. Can't do that on iPhone. You can, you know, I don't know that we need the full screens uh, apps anymore really with the buttons gone at the bottom. Another thing that, this is kind of petty, but Android and, you know, the Note 8 lets you have the screen on for 10 minutes before it times out. iPhone, the max to let you go is 5. You know, I like that 10 minute screen timeout. I know that's kind of petty, but it is what it is. And even the bar here, you know, I got the, the swipe gestures enabled. But if you want the navigation buttons, you can put them up. Um, it's just, with Android, a lot more options, right? You get to kind of really customize your phone how you want it. You can even have live wallpapers for your background. Apple, you have their... They're stock live wallpapers, but there's really not much to them. See, that's what I'm talking about with the screen time out there. So, Apple's stock apps, like their mail app, really good. A lot of people don't like it. I really do like it. I think it's better than the Gmail app. Um, that's a matter of personal preference. But a lot of Apple stock apps, you know, the music app, even Safari, I mean, their stock apps are pretty darn good. Their Photos app is good. It allows you to do different edits within the app. But then Samsung's doing good there, too. 
In a perfect world, I would prefer the Android operating system with Apple's apps. If you could have the Apple App Store on Android Pie with the quality of Apple's apps on Pie, that would be like the perfect software experience. Don't get me wrong, iOS is good. Like I said, I've been using this phone as my daily driver since last September. So I've been using this phone a lot. I really, really like how the apps feel. Uh, but at times, I do miss the Android phone here. You know, the Android experience. Another thing that you can do on this phone that you can't do here is you can schedule a text message and have it send at a scheduled time. Again, something small, but something that's pretty cool and powerful. Just stuff like that that you find all over the Note 8 and Android in general. So here's my, you know, software comparison between these two phones. I think either way you go, you're going to be happy. It just depends on what your values are. Do you want a phone that just works, does everything really well? Or do you want a phone that you can really customize and have a little bit more options? Well, a lot more options, let's say, and how you do different things. That's what we're looking at here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you're liking my channel and my videos, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Peace out.